What we're gonna do now is I'm going to show you the rhythms of Mickey's brain superimposed on his brain in real time. That's our goal. All right, let's try this out. So let's show you alpha rhythms. Oh, they work. What you're looking at is real-time alpha rhythms. These are those first rhythms described by Hans Berger in the early 1900s in Mickey's brains, changing in real time, recorded from this cap, superimposed on his brain. This is very reassuring. <laughs> they, are, they are there. He has a functioning, I'm alive. functioning brain. Oh, good. It's Above all... ground, that's good. Now what I'm doing is showing you theta rhythms. Theta rhythms, you can see they have a very strong frontal dominance. These are the rhythms that are associated with attention, concentration, working memory, holding information on mind. We can view all these rhythms in real time. Right now it's a demonstration. Uh, it's the first of its kind that I know of in, in experience in, this, uh, in a live audience here. But what we hope is that this will also drive the very research. Can being able to visualize your own brain rhythms in real time help you to control them. Okay, we have the rhythms going now. Now what we want to do is something also unique. We're going to let you hear the rhythms of Mickey's brain. So let's turn off theta. Can we hear alpha? So what we've done is we've sonified the alpha rhythm. We've converted it from a frequency that you can hear into a level you can hear. That would be alpha. Let's move over, turn it off and take a look at theta. Slower rhythm, deeper sound. So we kept the relationship between the rhythms. Theta rhythm is four hertz, so we just brought it up to a level you could hear, but its relationship with alpha is still the same. How about gamma rhythms? Gamma rhythms are much more rapid. We're now displaying it as a high frequency. So let's bring on these rhythms and let's turn on all of the sonification of Mickey's brain and all the visualizations of the rhythm. So there we go. The song of Mickey's brain in real time with his visualization. <laughs> I give you my brain. Well, the sound Excellent. of my brain anyway. Now, can you imagine being able to entrain with these rhythms, to be able to focus on a certain part of the brain, to be able to see what part of the brain lights up while you play a certain instrument, a certain rhythm at a certain amplitude. What does the brain look like before, during, and after an auditory driving experience? What this is about is about breaking the rhythm code. This is the genome project for us. That's the grail. Once we know what rhythm really does, then we'll be able to control it and be able to use it medicinally for diagnostics, for health rhythms, be able to reconnect the synapses, connections that are broken in Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and be able to use the innate energy that we do have in this vibratory uh, uh, mystery we call music. So that's where, all, uh, that's where we're heading. We, we want to make music. We want people to recognize and uh, doctors recognize that music has healing powers. And this is physical evidence. And I thank you so much for this, Adam, because this is a revelation. We're going to try to see if we could put up uh, my brain up there as well. We're really pushing the envelope today. Oh, no, your brain must look much nicer. There we go. So now we have both mine and Mickey's brains on screen for you today. Not just us, but our two brains floating there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, as we wanted to point out, we tried to do some really exciting technical things in addition to sharing a lot of content with you. But as we really want to emphasize, this is the beginning. Um, the, the bringing of us together, um, we think, is, is something much more than this talk. And uh, there's a lot of other physicians and scientists at UCSF where where I work that are excited to meet Mickey and bring their research focus into this domain as well. Because we all really do appreciate the power of rhythm and trying to bring it into the domain of neuroscience is an exciting, exciting adventure. And with that note, we're gonna start our adventure of our own. The best way to know about rhythm that I know of is to make a rhythm of your own. Everybody in this room has a rhythm. You might not know how to play a drum, but if you're alive, 
you have rhythm. I would invite you now to come over into the circle. You don't have to know anything, just be alive and experience what rhythm can do as a group, the rush of group rhythm. We have a, a drum circle over here with some beautiful drums supplied by Remo Belli. Let us enjoy the rhythm. Please, Adam. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.